I can get a little sense of uh, which direction I, I should uh, go. Um, maybe ask, you know, how many of um, you uh, consider yourself very technical engineering background versus like in finance and others? Like technical, maybe raise your hands. Okay, so all of us, that, that's good. Um, my, uh, my talk was uh, um, prepared for 45 minutes, then I realized it's only 30 minutes, so I'm gonna try, um, cover everything. Uh, in the very end, there is uh, uh, some um, case studies that we could, you know, we could cut some of those. Maybe that would be a way to uh, cut time if I ran out of it, but I will try. Uh, okay, so uh, just a quick word by myself, Wen Jin Chu. I'm a senior uh, director for technology strategy at the Future Way. Um, my, so, uh, 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 internal job function is to drive strategy for metaverse, web three, and trust. So, everything sort of all together. Um, and in that capacity, I've been involved with a lot of, uh, um, uh, open source projects. Uh, I'm currently uh, working with uh, a group of companies trying to start an open wallet foundation. Um, there was a mention earlier by Gabriel. Uh, it's going to be based on Europe, so uh, he's, he's uh, very much involved. Um, uh, I'm also in the steering committee for Trust Over IP. It's another Linux Foundation uh, project. Um, work on specifications for um, for you know trust and trust architectures, etc. Um, and W3C, so the World Wide Web. So um, you, you're probably all familiar with. So um, with that background, I will probably get started. Uh, it's uh, we're going to talk about the uh, architecture, and really it's three things. One is a uh, a general purpose open source digital world. And I think um, a lot of the time I want to emphasize the, 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 the first phrase, the general purpose. The second one is universal improbability. Um, and you know, what does that mean? Why it's very important? And then finally, we can talk about you know, how to achieve that as a architecture. Um, and and uh, there are a few case studies, like uh, if, if, if we have time, we'll, we'll go through those as well. Um, so, um, and I hope to get uh, your feedbacks, opinions, and potentially interest and in involvement. <laughs> um, so that, that will be my, my purpose of uh, this talk. Um, I'm going to start with the general purpose portion of it. And so there's a so-called specialized, and, and we're using crypto as an as a example because a lot of people automatically start think about that. But um, so I list a bunch of them, but this is uh, you know like I'm not as super familiar with it. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, different wallets you know out there, um, and there are many different types. You know, people talk about whether you have uh, custody or it's actually um, a, a proxy to another account. Um, and you can even imagine whether the money is actually in your wallet, right? Stuff like that. Um, but you know that uh, the way I think of it as a specialized is that it's only for one this particular purpose. Versus uh, on the right, I'm using this uh, Wikipedia picture <laughs> for uh, for iPhone. Um, you have essentially a um, a container for lots of stuff, and these are digital assets. This can be money, can be cards, you know, passes, and IDs, and can be essentially anything, like, why not, right? Anything that you feel important enough, you want to be there. Uh, you want to have a very personal control of it. So think about it. Yeah, it seems like it, it will make sense to, to have a general purpose one. Um, the other way to look at it is, uh, is, is this crypto wallet special at all? Um, so I, I copied this from, I think it's a, like a tutorial from Money Magazine, right, it's for layman's terms. But essentially, what is this wallet anyway? It is just a place to keep your secure code. Or 
uh, if you fancy, you can say, well, it's the owner's identity and account. It's just a UI so that you can reach an account which is actually elsewhere, not in your wallet. And if you think of that way, then it's no different from like my bank app, which is basically a little app which allow me to log in, get authenticated, which allow me then to access an account actually not sitting on my phone, but in you know, some bank's uh, infrastructure. Um, so in that case, you know, the, this crypto, crypto wallet is no different is that. I think it's, most of them are very badly designed, and therefore there's a lot of trouble with it. Um, so the other concept want to shift to, then it's this proprietary or closed versus open source and open standard. And uh, we, um, uh, I think in this country, we familiar with iOS and Android, um, all have this concept of a roughly general purpose uh, wallet. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of companies really want to see a, um, uh, see the need for a open source implementation of a wallet, but also that a, uh, such a wallet are based on open standards. So this openness, um, so if you, you know, think about like a, a credit card, right? You have Visa, which is in a way a consortium, and the bank, which bank offers the card doesn't really matter in terms of uh, openness or interoperability. Uh, as long as it's Visa. Um, and so in, in the, the similar concept can be applied for any other uh, uh, asset, which you know, some organization or some industry may define as standard, and, uh, um, and as long as you know, all the parties use that same standards, then that will be uh, interoperable. Um, in addition to that, the wallet itself, we may, if for, for a general purpose wallet, we may want to standardize how you know, it behaves so that any person can access or interact with that wallet or build that into their applications without essentially have a gatekeeper. So we will have a standard type of wallet um, the, you know, that the gatekeeper is all of us rather than you know, two giant corporations. Uh, so that would be another purpose, I think, for, for to achieve all of this. Um, and, and I think it's a, a very uh, important and uh, um, a very timely thing that we think about this. Um, so to summarize, I think uh, that digital water is a very critical piece of technology. And we need to ensure its openness and the level playing field um, and with interoperability. So that, uh, that is based on open standard and open source that can uh, solve a lot of problems that we don't have to reinvent all these um, solutions in different industries, right? So uh, you can think about you know, someone uh, like a DMV issuing a driver license versus a bank you know, want to connect with their consumer and access their accounts, or a crypto, or a university want to issue a diploma. Um, why do we need all these different uh, verticals to come up with a solution again and again? Uh, so uh, so that's, the, that, that's the concept. I will say a little bit about uh, the Open Wallet Foundation. It's still being formed, not formally uh, launched yet. So this is the, uh, the press release back in September when really the, uh, the discussions and uh, uh, preparations started. Uh, we, we hope to be able to announce uh, the, the formal launch uh, pretty soon. And there's some of the, I think the key words here about the mission, uh, why we're doing this, right? And um, uh, naturally, um, we are talking about wallet very um, uh, uh, loosely. Strictly speaking, this would not be exactly a wallet, but a engine or a, uh, uh, you know, um, that for someone to build a wallet. But this wallet, 
it doesn't matter which one build into their product, they will all be based on the same sets of standards and be interoperable. So, um, so you, you, you have a wallet that different kind of cards can be, or different kind of asset can be added into it, and the asset will behave based on whatever uh, that, that particular vertical standardization uh, says you know, should be. So anyway, uh, so that's the concept. And there are some examples of, uh, of these um, uh, assets we're talking about. Um, uh, again, these are currently, um, because the, uh, the foundation hasn't really been uh, set up yet, all of these are simply early discussions, and there's a lot of people are interested in payment tokenization um, based on EMV, um, and uh, so that, you know, naturally the, the credit card companies are <laughs> interested in that. Uh, I also, uh, MDL is the mobile driver license. Uh, I think there are three U.S. states uh, already supporting it. Um, uh, the W3C verifiable credential is a, a decentralized way to do credentials. Uh, so the verifiable credential is really, uh, even though the use credential is basically data that's verifiable. So you, you define any kind of data you want, and the verifiable simply means that you can uh, independently, without reaching out to a centralized server, to be able to verify the, the, the data's uh, 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 validity and, or, well, I should say, authenticity uh, of that. Um, uh, anonymous credentials are another type of credential that allow people to do uh, zero knowledge proof. Uh, so you can do selective disclosure, uh, sometimes even combine information together, and, and so that give you a lot of a privacy control uh, to the consumer. Um, uh, underneath here are many of the related, you know, organizations either work on specification or open source. Um, so uh, I, I would, I would uh, probably skip the introduction of all those to save some time. Um, so the question comes to how do we achieve um, universal interoperability? Now, um, um, I'm going to jump into uh, more engineering talk. <laughs> um, uh, trying to uh, maybe uh, walk back about the internet principle or the, you know, um, the architecture of the internet. Um, and uh, I, there are many ways to summarize this, but I, for today's talk, I'm going to talk about protocol and layering. Um, you, you may also hear so-called end-to-end principle or hourglass architecture or universal reachability. Basically, in the very beginning of the Internet, um, it, it actually, Internet was a, a you know, small rebel um, against many much better funded and established uh, alternatives. Uh, but Internet, in the end, uh, won because uh, it followed a very simple idea, which is uh, to make sure that we maximize um, reachability, or we want to be able to uh, allow Internet Protocol to be supported in almost any devices with the minimum effort. So it naturally does the least. It has very minimum functionality, very little, um, but trying to um, create this network effect, right? Now we are talking, you know, it's, it's a very common um, idea now, but at the, at the time was it very revolutionary and, and it was proved very successful. So we, um, unfortunately, in that minimum fun set of functionality in the internet, um, the authenticity, or some people would call security, is not one of them, and, you know, they are not in it. Um, and so we've been trying to sort of live with that decision ever since. And uh, um, we are trying to, again, you know, propose a new architecture which will add the authenticity or security of it, but without, you know, with the same uh, kind of uh, universal uh, accessibility, right? So we want to make sure any device and uh, with the minimum set necessary to, uh, to achieve trust, um, um, and then use different layers or higher layers to add new functionality on top of it. Okay, so um, this is a very 
common uh, picture. People start with you know this this dark cartoon, and uh, so um, uh, I have a very general purpose picture with two uh, entity interacting with each other through. Um, technology, right? And uh, you know, if uh, if the bob on the right side receive a message like this, uh, what do you do with it? Um, how can you trust it? What do you trust? What does it even mean trusting it, right? Uh, all that issues, and so it's a very complex issue. But it's uh, um, the, the picture itself is relatively simple, and uh, we, you know. Through many, many, uh, I think, uh, organizations and studies, we found out that financial requirement itself to solve this problem is actually pretty simple. Uh, it, we, we, we use the word authenticity, which is um, to mean the, uh, a, a authentic identification, knowing the source, knowing the source, or you can say knowing who you are talking to, right? Um, and so um, that can be divided into two components. One is a, a verifiable, unique identification, identifier. Um, so that eventually becomes your ID. Um, and the other one is some autonomy on your computer. Uh, autonomy or some control over its, your environment. And uh, uh, with these two, you can achieve authenticity. So this whole set of uh, quite mature algorithms allow you to achieve authenticity with you know, relatively uh, uh, minimum amount of effort and using very mature algorithms and crypto um, uh, protocols. Um, so uh, without going into too much of a detail, uh, I would uh, uh, make a claim that this is an, uh, A, necessary, but it's also largely sufficient. So we, we found this minimum set that um, can be the foundation of a universal um, trust uh, over internet. And all the other features we can, uh, actually can be built on top of this foundation. And uh, this whole set of uh, minimum features are simple enough that we believe um, all devices on the internet today can, be, uh, can support them. Uh, so that goes down to, like, I think, I think this is one of the earlier sessions talking about low-cost feature phones or, you know, at least low-cost smartphones can support these IoT devices, smaller battery-run devices can support this. Um, so we want to really be able to go achieve a universal reachability for this. Okay. Um, the, so as we walk up... Um, uh, as, you know, before we jump on that, there's a there's a you know a way of sort of like how do we actually support these, and uh, um, um, I'm going to use the autonomous uh, dead. Dead is a phrase that W3C uses for decentralized identifier. Um, uh, I like it, but um, uh, the concept are saying if you replace a different uh, ID, you would need to essentially achieve the same kind of. Uh, um, resolution and uh, 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 functionality uh, for, the, for your ID. But I'm going to use uh, the DID as an example here. And uh, there's multiple ways you can actually have a system to support these kind of a setup. And uh, on the left, you know, it's our current system. So you are either on a centralized um, uh, identity system today or a federated system like Op OpenID, for example. Um, or you can have a decentralized uh, system um, uh, like the, what the DID wants to do. Um, there are other examples like Web3 or some people call Web5 now um, of quite similar. And there's another class. People uh, tend to use the word uh, Web of Trust, uh, which are sort of both on peer systems. Uh, there's you know, there, there's a, a set of algorithms called autonomic which you know is even stronger in 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 the decentralization or allow the the individual to make decisions. Uh, but all of these can support the same uh, authenticity requirement uh, we we propose here. And therefore, you have a identifier, and you have authenticity guaranteed. All we need is a, a little simple protocol between them, and so that we call it a trust banning protocol. And so this protocol is very much similar to like an IP protocol. 
Um, that you can think of data as a you know, IP address, and this protocol simply talk very simple based on that address. Uh, and there are fully authentic messages between them. So uh, pretty straightforward. The protocol was only need to support asynchronous messaging. Uh, it doesn't really need uh, too complicated. Um, um, and especially if you, uh, because we don't need to add too much functionality on top of it, uh, in, in this particular layer, um, the messages you need to send are pretty simple. So you can have a very uh, authentic uh, messaging layer, uh, uh, quite common. And then, yeah, I think we can start to talk about interesting stuff. You know, then you can do identities, you can do credential, uh, do authentication, authorization, payment, money, crypto. All that can go in. Um, a lot of people are interested in doing uh, authentic media, like um, you know, how do we make sure uh, photos are not doctored? You know, how do we solve fake news problems and stuff like that? Can all go in, right? Um, so, um, and in in general, it's really any kind of data. So the the only difference is how do you define these data? What kind of data you define? And uh, I know uh, in, in, in earlier sessions, you know, there's a, there's a lot of a data model defined in the financial industry, and you can just plug in, and this whole set uh, works uh, in, uh, for you. Okay, uh, so just a quick summary. These will be the proposals we have in mind of this, this four-layer structure. And it's, again, very, very similar if you look at old, you know, like a TCP IP stack, uh, look like. Um, the ideas, philosophy are very similar, and uh, uh, I think that will help us to uh, not only solve these problems, but solving it in a very principled way so they are universal or applicable, so we don't have to reinvent this same stack again and again. Um, and so that, that's the idea. Okay. Um, um, Okay, so I'll probably skip the, uh, a, a little of uh, uh, that slide, but then come back to um, the wallet, right? What are we talking about the wallet? So wallet comes in, um, maybe we are you know, directly doing this on the phone, but a more general purpose scenario is where the wallet is really the connection, uh, the three-party connection between a computing device, a wallet, and the person. And so the wallet helps to bridge the gap of, you know, um, uh, a, a person have a, a convenient and uh, um, uh, interface to uh, manage these sensitive data. Um, not only you have, uh, you know, more likely to have physical possession of it, uh, but also give you a relatively convenient interface so you can actually start to do actions on it, uh, manipulate and do, you know, signatures, approve things, send money, right? Uh, so it solves uh, multiple problems here. Um, uh, and uh, again, this ties down to the, the rest of the architecture. Okay, uh, so this is just a quick summary. I think we don't have to re repeat them uh, again here. And uh, um, the... Uh, uh, so the more sophisticated features, um, and the, many of them already have mature protocols. I just don't have time to go uh, into it. But those features can be built on this basic authenticity layer. And then, and, you know, we, I, I, I like to think of them as reusable trust tasks. And the task pattern itself actually uh, like a, uh, a transaction. Uh, it it's really can be abstracted. Uh, not necessarily require a, a goods to be exchanged and payment, etc., but can be uh, abstracted and be applied and used in other industries too. Um, so those are reusable trust tasks that's built on top of this layer. And um, um, the uh, the good news is that most of the implementations that I, you know that, that we've we've studied today already supported. 
um, they do need some kind of refactoring out of mod for modularity. So typically, this layering already exists in some fashion, but it's not very principled. The, the interface are not clean, right? And so some refactoring are required in, in many of these implementations. And therefore, we need to sort of sit together and you know, agree on exactly where. Uh, in principle, they all can support them. The layering is already in place. Um, but uh, the exact uh, you know, details of that need to be, uh, need to be worked out. And so that need, they need to be then uh, conformed to a common, I should say, set of uh, common standards. And by that, those some of the uh, you know, standards, as you see, uh, already exist as well. Um, so let me see. Uh, I think my time is still OK. Yeah. I still have some time. So I'm going to go through some implementation examples um, on this. So, uh, uh, the, the, so the, the current state is these um, either central or federated um, systems, you know, OpenID, FIDO. Uh, and uh, the fundamental um, uh, uh, setting in these kind of systems is that you have a server. So this is shown as a server. Um, whether it's web or, you know, doesn't matter what kind of server, the server has a certificate, has a CA issued a certificate, and can be identified using, uh, you know, quite good uh, asymmetric um, um, identification uh, systems, and you can sign stuff, and there's a lot of things happening. Uh, but the user doesn't. The other side is not. So they are not um, what we would call peer-to-peer, -peer, or they are not decentralized, because you have one entity is clearly have a lot more resources than the other. Um, in this system, I think the classic one will use ID and password, and ID and password would show up as a you know, data entry in, in, a, in, in some kind of a database in the server, which is not very secure. And we have, I hope I don't have to preach that, but there's tons of problems with all these systems. Um, the federations model allows some kind of a, a slight improvement. So in this case, you introduce a, um, a provider, um, uh, like people commonly use, maybe like I use Gmail, <laughs> um, which uh, then act as a, um, uh, you will have an authentication, of course, so you log into this particular service. And then you authorize this service on your behalf to go log in here, and also authorize them to you know, release your user information. Um, and that's an improvement, but it's not a huge one, I would say. And the cost of doing this is that then you release your user information not only to the uh, person you are talking to, but you also release that to the middleman as well. And the middleman happened to know a lot. And so it's, it is, a, a, to me, like a not very uh, private uh, arrangement. Um, within this scheme, uh, you can introduce things like FIDO, which allow you to do mobile as well. So the user may feel like you are doing all, already doing all of this. Um, so you, you, uh, you can do your login, authorization, everything uh, on the mobile phone. Uh, that binds those three units together, um, but still back behind the scenes, your information are still going to you know some big aggregator. Um, this will be the first like uh, example of um, decentralization. Um, so this is happened to be based on uh, a Hyperledger project called Eris and Indy. Um, uh, so in this case, you have a wallet. Um, and uh, it, uh, it doesn't have to be this particular kind of blockchain or even blockchain at all. It's just some kind of database are needed there. And then uh, this would allow the two sides to establish a relationship. So it's like a personal relationship. You only need to in, uh, authenticate them once. Once you are known, you exchange your keys. And uh, in a way, you are known uh, forever, uh, you know, a way to authenticate that um, as long as, you know, uh, until your next key rotation. So it is well defined, and uh, you only need to reach this database or blockchain uh, once in a while. I don't know, 
you know, maybe nowadays uh, six months, three months will be sufficient uh, for key rotation. But even those rotations are, you know, automated uh, anyway. So most of the time, you now have a very secure channel point uh, peer to peer. And again, you can see from the picture clearly the two pictures are completely you know, symmetric, right? The two sides are symmetric. Um, so that allows the very secure channel between these, uh, these wallets and uh, uh, be able to actually um, uh, establish uh, trust and then build much more sophisticated functionality on top. Um, there's another example um, uh, for, uh, this is from Block. Uh, so they are doing uh, uh, the, you know, digital payments and, and also sort of a, a crypto to, to, uh, to many um, exchanges between them too. And uh, um, so one of the, the things you know, people would uh, think about it is uh, um, KYC, right? And so uh, like a verifiable credential would be a perfect idea of uh, a KYC requirement because it's essentially checks all the ID you want, uh, whatever the law says you need to check, and these, these IDs are based on a digital uh, verifiable credential. And the credential can be uh, established so, you know, that the customer can be essentially, um, uh, uh, you know, validated or, or um, uh, as much as whatever the regulation is. Uh, so this clearly with the did and verified credentials and a um, and the IPFS based replication system, these give you a pure, um, I, I guess, Web3 or you know peer-to-peer -peer way of doing the transactions and fully can be fully compliant with any regulation we have today. Um, uh, the last one is the most, uh, um, so this is sometimes called autonomic, but uh, basically this will be a purely web of trust model. Um, again, this, uh, I don't have, you know, uh, really time to do justice to this, but uh, you, you have, uh, instead of a, you know, people think of a blockchain, right, need to be in one place. Here, you only need um, a so-called witness, you know, some, sometimes friends, for example, in, in, in some of the social media uh, systems, you can do that. If you forgot your password, um, you can uh, pre-designate a few person friends, which will be able to then vouch for you to recover, for example. And so it's a very similar idea, just, you know, with designed with a more uh, uh, rigorous protocol behind it. Okay. Uh, so hopefully I convinced you that <laughs> there's a lot of uh, work going on and uh, many of these implementations. I think all of them are open source, uh, other than the first one, of course. Uh, but, uh, um, but, uh, um, and, uh, and then they essentially follow very similar model. And uh, uh, so within the uh, Open Wallet Foundation and some of the like trust of IP as well that I am being involved with, believe that uh, the whole industry can come together and uh, really follow a more uh, rigorous uh, structural model in these layers that allow us to basically have this benefit to, uh, to any device on the internet. Um, any industry doesn't have to be in, in finance, doesn't have to be uh, in any, we think of like, oh, you need a security. I think authenticity, if you think of it, I need it all the time. I want to be sure, like, who I'm talking to. Um, and so, um, so that's, that's our proposal. And I will quickly summarize um, the key takeaways. I think uh, digital wallets is very, very critical um, as an infrastructure, and we should um, make sure it's, <laughs> it's open. Um, so we give everybody a level playing field. It's not uh, overly centralized into a few small number of companies. Um, and I think we can achieve all of this um, by a architecture very similar to the like, TCP IP. So I call the trust task layer slash TSL would be the trust spanning layer, uh, similar to that nature. And so you have a very uh, specific trust tasks. And these tasks are built on top of a common and minimum uh, trust spanning layer. And uh, uh, so we, we think that's the good way or good path towards this universal interoperability for, for wallets. Um, and uh, uh, so um, I would uh, invite everyone to get involved. And I want to hear 
um, what do you want to see uh, in the, you know, in the, as a priority for open wallet? And uh, um, for that, I'm open for anyone's uh, suggestions and comments or questions. I believe some additional information you really want to like dig down deeper. Uh, uh, there's here's, uh, one is the specification. The, the other two are uh, videos of the um, uh, deeper talks that I've given in the past. Yes, any comments or questions or opinions? Mm -hmm. so yeah. So how that is Yeah. <clears throat> um, the, so whether it's centralized or decentralized, fundamentally is look at whether the two party has a symmetric or asymmetric relationship. So there are many ways you can avoid the password, uh, which is nice, I think. It's very convenient for us. But without fundamentally changing the underneath protocol, um, you're, uh, you don't really change uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the issue there, right? You do improve because you know, I, don't have to, I, don't, I would uh, not have to pick bad passwords. Um, I don't have to write down. You know, it, it will improve, right? I, I'm not saying those are not significant, but they don't fundamentally uh, change the, <laughs> the real uh, situation here. Um, so we believe that uh, both sides need to have strong uh, authenticity guarantees uh, that allows uh, all of us to have trust. Therefore, we don't need to rely on a giant sort of party to vouch for us, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is that adoption? Is it, is it a big, big guy that's supporting? Yeah. Um, so there are uh, the uh, the you you may notice that Open Water Foundation is going to be created in Europe because European Union are uh, uh, legally mandating uh, a U Europe uh, Europe wide identification. And uh, the, so the uh, EU ID, or um, uh, it is, uh, I think, to be launched next year. And that would uh, create a very big marketplace for all of this. So naturally, you know, many of the uh, EU services are tied to these IDs. So that includes like, you know, medical, travel, and between all the uh, financial services, telecom uh, between EU countries. And so that's one big incentive. And, and, and you probably hear a lot of like cross-border problems, right? Because each one's different. And that's another reason we need this kind of interoperability. Um, in, there's a numerous uh, similar um, uh, drivers in US as well. Um, uh, the, uh, 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 and so the, uh, a lot of the, these uh, adoption, I think, uh, currently are in uh, the niche market in niche areas. Um, but I think we should aim bigger. Um, aiming bigger is not to delay this thing, but to really uh, see the uh, snowball rolling. Because a small area usage does not, it, it's a lot of cost to implement a new scheme. But if you're only looking at the one slice of the market, it, it may not be big enough. People may not want to, you know. But once you look at a larger scope, then I think it will have a, 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 a you know, much stronger incentive for people to do this. <laughs> exactly. It does help with the data privacy too. Correct. Yes, 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 yes. And so this, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. So uh, losing the device or how the device, how do you recover, etc. So you, you, like in iOS, you, uh, they have a iCloud backup, right? Yeah. Um, and the key is really you do the backup. 
um, the key is how do you um, how do you hold the the, <laughs> the, the key yourself. Um, so in the end, you can see that you will need some kind of a web of trust solution if you don't want to ask you know Apple to hold the key for you, right? Um, um, so those are all quite related. Now, even if you hold a key for you, there are schemes that you can say, well, you can just recover one key for me, uh, not really the data itself, because from there you can then recover the rest of it. And so that, that is also possible, basically minimize uh, the amount of information you have to share. The keyword is really, you, currently you have no option. Correct, correct. Yeah, the protocol all exists today too so that you don't have to at all. Um, and, but the user convenience is a critical problem. And I think one of the, I think one of the early work for Open Wallet Foundation is to this, the, we call user experience, you know, how we can interact with, with this system, right? That's critical. Yeah, um, so there's a, uh, one is a, so if you, you lost your phone, um, the current like setup, and because this will require your, uh, some kind of a biometric authentication uh, for, for your, so a similar kind of a, um, system exists um, uh, to the, the wallet you would have in your iPhone or Android phone today. Uh, so that requires either it's a physical um, biometric mechanism or it is a time delayed lockup mechanism so you can immediately lock it up uh, for you um, so that data is not released that way. Um, and, and that's the, the, there's quite a lot of um, uh, new work being done today. Um, some are very like futuristic uh, with with AIs, and you know, you potentially can do more and more <laughs> get to that. Um, but yes, that's that's one way you uh, can lock this up uh, more. And the other is related to an earlier question about uh, because there's always a cloud backup copy somewhere, and when these two things happen, it's not exactly clear yet. So I'm I'm not claiming you know these are all perfect solutions yet. But uh, that's still to be worked out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have a question? Uh, no, I, that was my question. Oh, oh, oh yes, it is. Uh, so we are a R&D uh, uh, division or subsidiary in U.S. Um, and. Uh, uh, we are relatively small, I think uh, now under 400 people. Most of us uh, work on um, standards, open source, and ecosystems. Uh, so we, we don't have like developers or product groups here. Um, and uh, part of the, uh, so um, part of the reason that we strongly support this kind of a system is because we want to see a, um, an ecosystem that allow people to uh, uh, compete openly. So we don't, uh, we're not tied to a particular, because right now in, in Android, the Android system require you to sign contracts, right? Instead of a protocol like a TCP IP protocol or HTTP protocol, you can define an API and have open access to it. And that's the big difference. This is uh, true not just for us, for any, um, licensee or uh, other, uh, you know, or the Android-based phone manufacturing um, um, uh, companies and other devices too. So any times we get into like uh, uh, the apps, you probably hear um, a lot of the uh, apps want to do payment in in app, but you you know you you may be required to use. Uh, Apple Pay, use, you know, all those things are locked up because it's not a standard-based system. Not in this space, because <laughs> the issues we deal with are, are, are universal. Uh, it's uh, for um, uh, so all the companies involved. 
uh, do have uh, very uh, concrete and similar concerns. Um, the European Union, as I mentioned, uh, many countries uh, in um, in UK, uh, in Canada, and many states in US as well uh, have similar issues. And so it is a, uh, in high level, it is a, uh, a, um, um, a I think one is a access issue, whether you have an open standard for uh, whether it's competitor or you're actually your own customer too, right? Where, where they can um, innovate and build a product around. And the other is related to these silos. Because the silos just slow everybody down. And so both of the issues show up in, in uh, all the regions. And at the moment, the, the, uh, the, the, the area that's uh, pushing harder uh, than others, I think, is in European Union. So... Um, so that's why I think a lot of these uh, 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 initiatives are being driven there, and uh, that's why we, uh, we, we, we started this uh, uh, foundation in the European Union. Oh, uh, so uh, so whatever I present today is my view how this <laughs> could be done. I think we believe this is the right way to go. Uh, the foundation hasn't even been established yet, so I cannot represent you know the foundation itself naturally uh, or any other company that may uh, have you know uh, other solutions as well, right? Um, so, but uh, uh, hopefully, you know, the, the, the message is quite clear. We, we have no issues. We have uh, a lot of people who want solutions. And uh, so we are working on, as part of a bigger community, on how to reach the, the most optimal solution. And this, you know, this is a, a proposal from us of considering a lot of these, uh, uh, if you look at the, the um, the specification document is actually coming out of a trust of IP. So that's another Linux Foundation uh, group that's writing specifications. Many, many organizations involved. We're just one member in that organization. Um, and so these are very, I think, um, well-known and studied uh, approaches. They're not exclusive, naturally. There's a lot of uh, different ways you can do this. Any other questions? Not. Thank you very much. Uh, come find me. <laughs>